What is going on guys? It's Toby here and welcome back to yet another video. Thank you all for tuning in. But today we're going to be doing an honest review. I think an 800 mile honest review of my 2022 Rapid Blue LT1 Camaro. So we're gonna break down the finances, show the package and basically give my honest opinion on the car. Just walking around the car, this sixth gen Camaro has a pretty cool looking bumper. It's different than the previous gen. It gets a lot of hate on the internet. But one thing I will say is that it looks better in person. Now this car comes with 18 inch wheels. I'm pretty sure I have to confirm that. Also have Brembo brakes in the front, so that's from the SS. Now, even though this is an LT1, it's basically a V6 body of a Camaro with the 6.2 liter V8 with some options from the SS. So this comes from the SS, obviously those Brembo brakes in the front, but we don't have them in the back. So the brake setup on this 2022 LT1 is extremely similar to my performance package Mustang GT, as I have six piston Brembos in the front, just like this car, and then we have a non-Brembo in the back. I'm not even sure of the size but yeah the only downfall I have with this car are the Goodyear Eagles that come with this car so they're run season all flats and I tried to take it to the track and I could not even hook up on a 2000 rpm launch I mean it really doesn't help that these tire setups is a 245 all around so you have these really skinny Prius tires from the factory and basically it doesn't help don't mind that uh burnout rubber all over the rear bumper we only have about 800 miles on this car but yeah, I already sent it at the track one time and it almost ended up me crashing. So that was not a good thing. This package also came spec with black bow ties. So you can see the black bow tie right there, but I don't have the Euro taillights. That's something I'm gonna do after market, possibly get a sponsorship for some C8 styled Euros, but we do have the active exhaust on this car. So you can see that they're valve. This is the black bow tie that I was referring to earlier. And I don't have the RS package on this car. That's a little bit of a higher trim, but we do have these heat extractors up here, by the hood and basically right above the engine. The thing that's cool about these six gen bumpers is that you have these hidden tail lights right here or headlights I meant to say. So basically you can't see them until they're on and we'll show that in just a second. So let me turn them on and you guys get the general idea. So they're very well hidden. I just don't like all the plastic on the bumper and the grill. This is what the car looks like from the back. Once again, we have those factory red tail lights and it's super simple. I mean, there's the exhaust, huge muffler right there. You can probably get some good weight savings and cut off a 10th of your quarter mile time if you get rid of that huge muffler, possibly do a resonator delete. And you can see the rubber all over the back of the car from that burnout I did at the drag strip. But let's go ahead and open up the trunk and see the trunk space. This is how you open up the trunk. There's a button right underneath of here. It's kind of different from the Mustang, but kind of similar. But one thing I've noticed in the difference between the Mustang Mustang boot and the trunk in this car is that the opening space is a lot smaller in the Camaro, but you actually have more volume space with inside of the actual trunk. What exactly does this mean? Well, it's harder to fit big items into the trunk, but you actually have more space in the trunk than you do in the Mustang. So it's kind of weird. You can't really utilize all the space if you can't shove something through that small hole right here. And that sounds incredibly messed up. This car did come with a factory tint as well, which is kind of weird. Usually they dye up the windows, but you can see it right here. So we do have a tint and this looks a lot darker than what I have on my Mustang so it's definitely below 35% and I think I have a windshield tint as well on this car straight from the factory which is super uncommon like I don't even think any auto manufacturer does that but for some reason my Chevy dealer did that so taking a look at the inside I did option for the upgraded sound performance package so this is from Bose it's super good it actually sounds just as good as the Bang & Olufsen system that I have in my Mustang GT we have power windows I also optioned for this red seatbelt right here but we do have cloth seats and we'll talk about that in just a second we have a leather steering wheel right here with the stitching I mean the stitching is super high quality if I can zoom in we do have the v6 dash that only shows 160 I'm pretty sure that the SS dash shows up to 200 or maybe 180 miles an hour and this is just like a basic view or look into the interior here this material right here is leather red. I mean, obviously there are some plastic pieces. The only concern that I have with this car is the rear visibility. I'm six foot tall and I have no problem seeing over the hood when I have my seat all the way down, but I know people that are shorter can't see out of the top of this car. So they can't see over the hood and they can't see any of the road. Probably one thing you might consider if you're looking into getting this car is that you may not be able to see over the hood if you're shorter than I'd say maybe 5'8", but you can always jack the seat up because this car does also have power seats. So it's not manual, even though it's a base model. We have paddle shifters as well. So this is the 10 speed automatic transmission, the same one that Ford uses in their 10 speed Mustang GT. The only difference here is I think is in the name because Ford and GM actually made the transmission together. So we're gonna turn the car on 
and get into the different driving modes and show that upgraded infotainment system. Now that you guys can see what the dash looks like when it's all lit up, we're just gonna scroll through the options here. So we have trip information. I'm pretty sure you can set up your track timers. You have estimated range as shown right there. You get your instant gas mileage, oil life. Let's look at tire pressure. So all the TPMS sensors. We're also looking at average speed, and there's your track timer right there, battery voltage, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not trying to bore you guys. We're gonna go through the main things and features of this car. With regards to rear visibility, you literally cannot see jack So I have my mirror set up like this, and every time that I make a lane change, I'm looking back multiple times. Now in the Mustang, I have a blind spot sensor, but you can see way more out of the back window and the side windows, so you can't see anything out of the back at all. This right here is how your AC works. So you can scroll to the left to make it cooler. This makes it hotter. So yeah, super simple. And then this is how you adjust the fan. So you spin it right to do more fan and then you spin it left to decrease the fan. Now let's get on to discussing this. So we do have Apple CarPlay in this car. So that's pretty cool. We have the Bluetooth option of running that. And then if we go back to the main menu, we can just show the basics of this. So we have OnStar Services, which is like a satellite subscription, Sirius, My Chevrolet. And then if we go into the settings, we can control some of the valves for the exhaust. So in here we have common settings like this, voice, running applications, we can go to apps. So Android Auto, apps, audio, climate, you know, all that type of stuff. Auto defog, auto rear defog. And then if we go to vehicle, we can go to driving mode. So you can change up the engine sounds. So that changes up the valves, opens and closes them. And then if you go to steering, you can change between sport and tour. Unlike the 2SS and the 1SS that may come with higher packages, you cannot change up this LED color. So that lights up white at night and it stays white you can't change anything about it now the 2ss has a bunch of like led options inside of here and that's something that you miss out on and i guess if you're looking to buy this car for your teen you can actually turn on the teen driving mode which limits power and all that type of stuff keeps on the traction control you do also have a valet mode so you enter a pin and then you keep it there so basically that just limits power once again like the teen driving mode to make sure that the valet people aren't going crazy with your car as far as the back seat goes it's completely useless you have less room in here than the mustang g so you can't really fit anybody back there unless they're like a freaking infant and they're tiny so completely forget that so what I think we're gonna do is do a little bit of a test drive and do some talking while I'm driving and basically continue the review so we're gonna get driving now and I'm gonna hook up my GoPro so you guys can see me talk and drive at the same time so I think one of the immediate questions that we need to talk about here is whether or not this car is comfortable for you to daily drive so it makes 450 foot pound of torque from the factory and 455 pounds and horsepower and overall I would say yes it's extremely comfortable to drive especially daily driving because you do have this 10 speed automatic transmission now as far as the seats go even though they're cloth they're extremely comfortable and like I said the only thing you really ever be concerned about is the lack of visibility out of the back of the car I mean you are being held in this position that's extremely low to the ground but besides that, it's extremely comfortable to daily drive. Pricing wise, you can start out with the LT1, which is basically the lowest trim level of V8 that you can buy within the Camaro family. So you have the LT1 Camaro, then you have the 1SS Camaro. I'm pretty sure you have the 2SS Camaro, and then you have the ZL1 and the ZL1 1LE. I think you can also get the 1LE package for the 1SS and the 2SS, but those are both higher in price than the LT1. So the LT1's retail price is around 30 37 grand no it's actually 34 grand I think the 1SS starts at 37 grand and then the 2SS is 42 grand I think the regular ZL1 starts at about 65 grand and the 1LE starts at about 68 grand so the LT1 is the cheapest option that you can get so switching back to the big camera now we already discussed the affordability of this car so it starts at 34 grand I actually got this one for 40 grand because of the COVID markup as well as all of the options that I put on the car such as the infotainment system, etc., etc. So all those options hiked up the price. I think I just accidentally ran that red light right there and there was a cop right there, but he's not coming after me. So I need to pay attention a little bit more. But as I was saying, I completely forgot what I was saying oh my god oh so yes so with all the options that i put on this car it came out to 40 grand we can show the sticker because the chevy dealer actually laminated it for me but as you can see we are getting 19 miles per gallon out of this car right now and it has some sort of cylinder deactivation so as you can see i'm cruising in the v4 mode right now 
and then I think when you step on it, it transfers back to the V8 mode, so it uses those four cylinders again, but I've been whomping on the car, beating up on it pretty bad, and I'm getting 19 miles per gallon, which is extremely good for a city driving V8. I mean, as far as the 10 speed goes, it's extremely comfortable for daily driving as well because you don't really feel the shifts. Now, one difference that I noticed between Ford's 10 speed transmission and GM's, even though they collaborated on the transmission together, is that this car and the 10 speed in the Camaro shifts a lot smoother than the Mustang GT. So when you're flooring it in the Mustang GT, you actually feel the shifts a lot with the 10 speed. And I was super surprised. And it's just overall a lot smoother in this car. So it does make it more comfortable if you're gonna womp on it a little bit while you're daily driving the car. Thing that's worthy of noting is that Chevy also recommends a 1500 mile break-in, but I didn't really follow that. Like if I'm gonna be honest, I followed the break-in schedule until about 500 miles and then I opened it up. So I followed the break-in schedule religiously for the Mustang. And then from this one, I kind of didn't because I've been reading online that it's not really necessary in a modern car and that you should actually break it in how you're gonna drive the car so that you set the rings right and that they expand. And I'm talking about the piston rings. All right, I just saw like literally three of my classmates that I went to high school with and I'm just like chilling and recording, driving around UF campus right now. This is pretty funny. If I'm being honest and completely being honest, being blunt and truthful, this car does have the affordability factor for being a sports car. I mean, I don't think you can find a better bargain for 34 grand if you do happen to get one of these at retail price. And that's not really common in the COVID market right now because everything is being marked up. I think I paid like a two grand markup on this car and I'm currently financing it right now. So it definitely is affordable, but there are some drawbacks because first of all, you're not getting a top trim vehicle. You are missing out on some important cooling factors that you get with the SS package and basically suspension upgrades and that type of stuff. So if you wanna take this car to the track and you're going back to back passes and doing circuits and that type of stuff, you are gonna have some cooling issues because this wasn't designed in the same manner that the SS was. So it's not really suited for circuit and back-to-back -back passes at the track, but one major advantage of going with this car, just to contrast the disadvantage and compare, is that it's super, super light with the basic interior that it has. So this car is weighing in at about 3,600 pounds. The 2SS, which is fully loaded, is weighing in at about 3,800 pounds, if I recall correctly. So we're gonna have to confirm that with Chevy. But basically this car is super light, makes 455 crank horsepower, and has a 10-speed automatic transmission, which is known to be one of the fastest shifting automatic transmissions in the world. This thing is like a speed demon in a straight line, and you can build it up, which I plan on doing to run about 10s naturally aspirated full bolt-on. Also have a couple of different driving modes in this car, which we'll discuss in just a second, but I'm gonna go into sport mode and do a quick pull just for the one time, because I really don't wanna get in trouble, and I've been getting close to getting in trouble. So we're gonna do a first gear pull just so you guys can hear what it sounds like. So it sounds good for a stock car. Mind you, that's a completely stock exhaust, and hopefully that was not a cop that may have been a cop that's great but what i did basically is just hit it over from the manual mode to the drive mode to ensure that the car would hold the revs and all that type of stuff but it sounds great for a stock car we're gonna have to do some pulls and test out the draggy times 60 to 130 to give you guys a little bit of an understanding of how this car performs stock but these are the different driving modes that i'm referencing so you can actually cycle through them like this you just press on that button right here and what you do is go down so you have tour at the top sport snow and ice you do not get a track mode but you can also activate launch control because this car does have launch control so what you need to do is cycle down to the sport mode just like that and then from there you need to hold down the traction control button two times so i'm pressing it two times and then it'll engage this competitive mode, which means you're ready to do a launch. So what you do from there is hold down your foot on the brake all the way down. Like you have to press down with maximum pressure and then you hold your foot on the gas and it'll hold it at 2000 RPMs and you're set to launch. So here's the window sticker that I'm talking about. As you can see, the city gas mileage is 16, highway is 26. I've been doing a mix a little bit of both as of like the past couple of days. And this is the total vehicle price right there, 40,000. So there was a little bit of a markup from the dealer because of COVID prices. You can see that the standard vehicle price is 34 grand. Like I said earlier, 
That is the retail price, but we do have options on this car. So 10 speed automatic transmission, remote vehicle start, dual mode performance technology package, active exhaust, Chevrolet infotainment, eight inch system, audio system. Oh, so those wheels are 20 inches. They're not 18. Five spoke carbon flash painted aluminum with run flats. The rapid blue color itself is a 395, almost $400 option. So I'm trying to keep this video as short and sweet as possible while maintaining maximum effectivity at convenience my points so this car is definitely one of the performance bargains out there it comes with a lot of nice options and for 40 grand I think the only competitor that this car has is the 301A Mustang. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at that 6.2 liter V8. It also comes with hood struts. That's a little bit of a convenience and it's not a Mustang thing because you have to hold up the hood with the Mustang and then put in the stick and all that type of stuff. But here's a look at the 6.2 liter LT1 engine. I mean, this thing can't really make reliable power boosted, but full bolt on with heads cam, it makes like almost 700 wheel horsepower for an NA car and it's super, super fun. My firm belief the exhaust note itself for a stock car is already a selling point but let's go ahead and open up the valves and show the differences between them being closed from the inside and then i'll show it on the outside all right so if we're going to give the car a rev in just a second but this is what it sounds like in sport We've got to show it on the outside and then if we go over into touring mode it kind of closes up the valves but it kind of sounds the same at the same time and then if we move it into the snow slash ice mode, I think it quiets it a lot, but we might have to change that up in here. Now, one thing I don't like about this car is that you have a 2K RPM soft limiter, so it kind of sucks. You can't really rev it up to the moon, but you can always remove that with a tune. So let's try and switch up these settings here. So let's go to vehicle. Then we go to not driving mode. Actually, yeah, probably driving mode. Engine sound. Let's put it on stealth and close up those valves for certain and see what it sounds like. Oh, okay, you can definitely tell the difference right there, but you can see me hitting the soft limiter. Now let's put it back into sport, and I think that's what actually opens up the valves, not your driving mode. Okay, yeah, so now I think we can put the camera down and record the exhaust note from a third person perspective. Fortunately, I don't have anyone recording here, and I hopefully I don't piss anybody off by doing this, but we're gonna put the camera down like right here, and then we'll give it some revs to show you guys the comparison. I need to prop it up at a better angle though. That gives you the general idea of what it sounds like with the valves open and closed. I mean, the Mustang is a lot louder, but it does have performance long tube headers with cats. So, I mean, you can't really compare the two. I'm sure this thing would scream if it had a similar setup. And I'm pretty much gonna do Cook's headers, I think, or Texas Speed. I'm not entirely sure yet. Last thing I think I'm gonna do for this video is show the audio system and how it sounds, but you can't really capture that on video. And I'm gonna bite the bullet and possibly get a ticket from the Mexican police out here in Tijuana. I'm gonna do one pull and show you guys how much this thing picks up for a stock car, because I think that's an important part of the review. If we're reviewing a performance sports car, I think we need to at least give it one full send. This right here would be uh, the Tijuana on-ramp that we're gonna use to do some road testing out here. So I'm gonna drop the first, floor it. the baseline acceleration it's kind of slow from a hit because the car still needs to be opened up and that type of stuff but it is faster on a roll which will do one roll I'm really risking it out here because there are a lot of Mexican police time I guess we'll go down a couple of gears then we'll floor it this is a higher speed roll one good rip out of that I am not risking it more than that so it's not too bad for a stock car it definitely has some pickup to it it's like mad decent you know definitely quicker than the Mustang GT because I did race one in Mexico as well and I pulled a little bit on a 10 speed stock one thankfully the Mexican police didn't catch on to me that was kind of risky I wasn't even using Waze or anything or that type of stuff or I don't even have a radar detector in here but I was just going crazy on the car right and I was getting like uh, I think 21 mpg on my instant mpg. It says zero because I'm stopped right now But yeah, it was doing pretty well for going wide open throttle and I mean this car sounds great Like you guys can hear it in the exhaust clips every single shift is like 
it just sounds so good i think it sounds way better than a stock mustang gt if i'm going to be honest now sally with the exhaust and her header set up and the whipple obviously it sounds better but stock for stock this car sounds better one thing i forgot to mention is this car does have a crazy stock burble so listen to this like this is factory can you get it to like 3k rpms Uh, it won't let me do it. I got to do that again. Right now we can actually try it, but the sun's glaring. You guys hear that? It like burbles a little bit. You guys get the idea. So for the last portion of this video, as promised, I am going to play some Apple CarPlay with a no copyright sound. So you guys can hear what this sounds like. That's pretty much gonna do it for this video. This is an extremely comfortable car to daily drive. It obviously has some get up. Let's do some mods. Let's get it running 10s NA. Maybe with a pro charger, I'm not entirely sure yet. But yeah, this car has plenty of potential, has a banging audio system. So if you guys are looking into an LT1, definitely consider it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, that's gonna do it. And I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to stay tuned for more bangers this week.